Hello and welcome back. This is part 15 of a series where I am building a protogen head. It's been a few months since I've made any substantial progress on this because I've been kind of busy and just procrastinating over the summer, but BLFC is rapidly approaching and I really would like this to be done before then. Previously we set up a button to toggle the capacitive touch inputs to be able to disable them by default on startup to allow putting the head on without accidentally going through the menus. That button is kind of just shoved in here right now. There it is. Um, and obviously I still need to like finish stuff, but uh, that's kind of what I'm get getting at today. So uh, since last time, I've added the capacitive touch strips to the crown of the frame to be able to use it, uh, use the menus and eventually other stuff while wearing the head. Uh, it's not particularly comfortable yet. I want to get some foam in here. That's going to not be today, but soon, hopefully. The goal for today is just routing some of the wiring in here because there's a lot of just wires all over the place right now, uh, especially the wires for those capacitive touch strips are just all over the place. I want to tape them down, get them ready so I can put foam over it to like give some padding on the top of my head and just also on my cheeks because that's kind of uncomfortable. But obviously it's technically wearable. Uh, I needed to get these on before I could start finishing the rest of the head. I also want to get the wiring done just in case I need to redo any of it before I start finishing the rest of the head. So let's try to get the wiring done today. And as a demonstration of these capacitive touch things, uh, I know you can't see the menu from here, but if I go, I can see the menu barely. I need to figure out how to move it, I think. But uh, that's menu, then down, menu, menu, down, menu. There we go. So I did all that using the capacitive touch strips to drive the menu. And I can, well, why is it, is it glitching out? Oh, I know what's going on. The capacitive touch is glitching out and it was constantly like hitting menu or something to restart the animation. Okay, so that's a little bit interesting. I thought that this was set up in a way. Oh no, that's right. I do need to like reset the power after I put it on so it can calibrate the capacitive touch. So there we go. So if I go into the menu, sorry, I was looking at my, bigger screen to see what I was doing. So oh, I need to turn the touch on after a power cycle. So if I hit my little toggle button, and now I can go into the menu. Uh, the first order of business actually is to increase the, um, I keep sliding down my head. Hopefully that won't be a problem once I finish it. Turn the brightness up so you can see better through the um, visor. And then if I, Go down to that. There we go. Now it shouldn't be acting up. And then if I exit the menu, I can see it on the internal screen as well that it's sliding. Uh, yeah, just this animation. Oh, but it still entered the menu. That's a little weird. All right. That might just be the wires are touching my, my face inside of here. So I'm not going to worry too much about this right now. It wasn't, I wasn't having problems when I was testing this before. I think it's just the temporary nature of all this is just kind of getting a little weird, but I can cancel it and then we're back to just normal. So for, for now, I'm not worrying about that. The goal for today, route those wires, tape them down, uh, figure out which order they need to be in and probably solder some pin headers to it to make it easier to connect and disconnect from the board so I don't have to match up which one goes where every single time. But for right now, I'm gonna take this off, aim this camera back at the bench, and then we're gonna get started. So now that I have it on the bench, I've removed the visor, and I can show a little bit more of what's going on in here because it is kind of a mess. So what you can kind of see here is all of these wires here are coming in from the frame and are going into this bundle of wires that has just, um, these are just bare wires that are plugged into like uh, jumper wires. And then those are plugged into the connector here. And while this, you know, works for now, I don't want to do that in the long run. I want to have something much better where like I have some pin headers up around here or so, or maybe over here, just somewhere underneath tucked away that 
I plug these wires into and that's it. I can just, I, I don't have to worry about matching up the colors because you can tell these colors are just not the same, like white to purple and purple to black and blue to white. Like that's just to match up which sense, which of these touch pads goes to which, which button input. Cause I wasn't really uh, thinking when I put the wires on here, I didn't match colors. If we go over here, you can kind of see a little bit more like the inside here is just a mess. The, the, all the wires come in and then just go around and then just everywhere. And then this is the return wire from the second LED panel. So I, I want to improve the situation in here by taping stuff down. Uh, this I might not tape down just yet, but I do want to improve the overall situation. And like this stuff works. I know you can't really see the OLED very well, but if I hit the menu button, you can see or the menu button. And the back button, you can see that it's changing. I've got it currently set up, so menu is over here, back is over here, up and down are on the sides. So I can hit menu and then hit, go to the animations and then go down to that one. And then I want it to play that animation and you can see it plays the animation. And if I exit out of the menu, uh, there, it didn't up draw frame, that's why that, so yeah. It just works, it's great. Uh, and of course, there's the toggle button. So I can get to the toggle button and then if I press the toggle button, then it doesn't work anymore because I turned it off. So this is all working how I want. I did some testing previously and I didn't have any of those phantom inputs uh, when I was wearing it. So I think it's just the way that the wires are routed right now. Uh, are is, is causing some problems. I also, there's a lot of stuff that I can tweak on the sensor board as well. So I haven't done that yet because I haven't needed to, but I may need to do some tweaking on the hardware side of things, the driver for the hardware. So that is the current status of the capacitive touch. So now let's try to figure out how we want to route some of these wires. So let's take a look in here. I'm going to get this return cable for the LED panel out of the way because I'm just not, that's not what I'm worried about right now. Probably going to want to tape it down at some point. And I have another long one like this that I can use. I'm just not worrying about it at this immediate moment. So as we recall, I put some magnets up inside here and here to help hold the visor on but I want to make sure I don't interfere with that which I guess isn't too big of a deal um, look in here it's just you know the the magnets in there on both sides so I just, as long as I stay clear of those magnets I shouldn't have a problem obviously there's still like a lot of other stuff that needs done like I need to figure out where to put this button and I need to like actually heat shrink it. I'm going to get the button out of the way right now because it doesn't need to be there. All that I really need to worry about right now are these six wires coming from the capacitive touch and going to the rest of the everything. Where do I want my little block of connectors to be at? Well, that's a very good question. So they need to go to here. So this is where the connection on the circuit board is. There's also the stuff on the other side. So I could do it either way. Um, I don't want it right next to the magnet in case that's going to interfere with anything. So I can't like put it right here or certainly not here because this is also in the way. So that's a little fortunate. So I, I think it might have to be like at the top, which is kind of annoying. But I don't really see a better place to put it. Um, yeah, because anywhere else, anywhere else like further down over here is just going to interfere with the LED panel. So unfortunately, I think that means that I have to go like right here in the middle of the, the top, which is kind of annoying. Maybe a little bit off to the side so it's not like right on the top, but I still want it to be a little bit away from that magnet. 
So let's see. If we're going for about here, we've got... So where, where's black? Let's start with black, which is the one on this side over here. If I take that wire like this and kind of route it up in through. I know you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm probably going to cut a lot of this out. But if I do something like that, and then that gives me the wire right up to approximately where I want it. That seems reasonable. Okay. I'm not going to put all of these in the video because you can't really see a whole lot of what I'm doing anyway. So let's just go with starting with one, and then I'll do the rest and show the results. I need my captain tape, my brand new that I've never used, and I didn't even think about using it when I taped down the ends of the sensors here. I guess I can talk about the sensors really quick. So really all that I did for these was I got some copper foil tape. Uh, there's adhesive on the other side, uh, and I just stuck it on here, uh, overlapping. I just to have a larger touch sensor area, just a target, larger target, and then just ran it down to the end effectively to be the wire so it would be flat on the top other than these little bumps here where I had to solder a wire to them. And then I soldered the different pieces of tape together. And then I had to put some tape down over the end here to A, insulate this connection, and B, the heat from soldering the wire on kind of made the adhesive fail. So I needed to just tape it down anyway. And I just completely didn't think of using the captain tape there and just use clear tape, but whatever, it's fine. For the rest of these, I will use the captain tape. And I have no idea if I would want larger pieces of tape or not for this. This is literally me just figuring it out as we go along. And as I mentioned, like the end goal is to probably have some foam uh, covering the inside here, just to give it some padding on my head. And that will also make it so I'm not feeling these wires straight on my head. Uh, just try to make it comfortable. And I'm gonna need some foam on like this and the one on the other side, because this is like right where my chin, or my cheeks are, and it is not, un it is not comfortable. I wore it for 15 minutes doing this part of the video, if, if even that long, and it was already like, okay, I'm done. Now, and it's not pretty, but it doesn't need to be because nobody's, literally nobody's gonna see this once it's covered in foam. And then I don't, think it's a problem to have these wires right next to each other. So the order of the wires on the frame side need to be in the correct order so that when I plug straight in, I want to be able to just go straight through from the, P the main PCB to whatever connector I make for the head wires. And I want that to, um, to to be like you just connect the end to the end and then the second one and then the third one and so on and not have to think about what goes where. Which means that when I order the wires on the frame side, they have to be in the correct order for that to happen. So I'm going to have to actually stop and think about that before I solder them up if I do that. By my count, I believe there's like, counting this weekend, which is the, today is the 19th of August. Counting this weekend, I believe I have seven weekends at which I'll be at home between now and BLFC. So I've, I've got to get moving on this. I'm going out of town for two weekends uh, at the end of September. I'm probably going out of town again for another weekend in early September, so I re and then there's going to be between my long trip and BLFC. There's two weekends, I believe, maybe three. 
Uh, the last weekend before BLFC is going to have to be like dry fit all the packing to make sure everything's going to fit in the car. Basically, the point is I am very rapidly running out of time to work on this, and I'm trying to force myself to work on this for at least an hour every day on the weekends. So now what we have are six little wires of various lengths poking out the top here, which that's approximately where they're going to end up. So what I want to do now is plug them back in and put this back on and see if it's still acting oddly or not. It also doesn't need to be perfect because I can, when I'm wearing this, I can just turn touch support off into, unless I'm actively using it. So it doesn't need to be perfect. But for right now, let's plug everything back in so we can validate that everything is still functioning and that we have, and, and also to validate what the ordering needs to be. So black needs to be menu. I want menu to be brown slash purple. White is back. I want back to be blue. Sorry, there we go. Uh, Gray is down, so that needs to be black. Purple is up, which needs to be white. And then these remaining two are um, just for future expansion. This capacitive touch driver has 12 channels on it and I only need four for the main primary buttons. Uh, I figured I might as well put two more in here while I'm at it just to, because, you know, once this is done, this is done. I'm not come, I can't unglue and come back in here and change this, so I figured I'd put two more in here. Uh, the software doesn't look at them. I could hook them up, it doesn't really matter, but they just exist, so I'm, I'll plug them in for right now. They're literally not gonna do anything except make the light on the capacitive touch driver board turn on to say, hey, I detected a thing, but that's all that that's going to do for right now. Um, so let's shove this out of the way a little bit and try to put this on. Oh, I'm gonna to need to put the button back on to be able to turn Passive touch back on once it starts up. And I need power where to put my battery. I haven't even thought about what I'm gonna do to store a battery in here. I think in the the first times I'm wearing this, I'm literally just gonna run this. Um, I'm literally just gonna run this long USB cable out the bottom of the head and just snake it somewhere to a battery in my pocket to for the first time I wear it and figure out a way to mount a battery inside later maybe. But there's still even more hardware I wanna put into the head, like a boop sensor and an eye tracking camera. So, and I probably, I, I think I'm gonna to need to move the OLED off of this PCB so I can angle it so I can actually see it. Cause it's, I can't see it very well from the angle and from the, the focus distance. So I might, I might need to put it like up here somehow. So, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be a thing. But anyway, that's finished. This is gonna be a long project to like get completely done. I just want it to be wearable for right now. So, excuse me while I go put this back on, because it is a pain to get put on, and I guess I'm gonna need to adjust one of the cameras again. Ah, these wires are in my eye right now. And I can barely see my internal display. But anyway, yeah, you can see there's a mess right now. Uh, yeah, menu, back, menu, down, down, up, menu, down. Wait, I can't even read this. What am I on? <laughs> I don't know where I am. Yeah, that, and then I want... Uh, 
I can't. What is the bot? Oh, it. <laughs> Oh right, okay. God, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just drawing a blank on uh, stuff, and this is very. I almost want to swap up and oh, there it goes. I almost want to swap up and down. Um. Okay, yeah. See, it's restarting the animation because it's thinking that I'm pressing men menu. So something is like. It's it's definitely overly sensitive right now. I see the little LED on the thing blinking, so it's, it's... <laughs> the menu button is definitely getting triggered uh, superfluously, but... Uh, whatever. Um, I think I can adjust that in software, but I don't want to do that right now, because I just don't have everything set up and that that's taking longer than I want to spend right now. I probably should adjust that before I solder everything in just to make sure. Um, but of course now that I'm just standing here not doing anything, I don't see the lights blinking. So yeah, like it definitely like blinks at me if I come come up here and touch these. Like it definitely is seeing that and then if I hit this that opens the menu. This one doesn't do anything. This is up. I might want to make this down instead of make instead of that one on the other side be down. I don't know, but I'm just glad that this actually mostly works. Uh, the problem is with adjusting the sensitivity is I might make it not sensitive enough to work once all of the layers of latex are involved. Because there's going to be at least one layer up here, possibly more for like hair. I'm going to be wearing gloves. Like, I know it works right now by put, if I cover these with latex and if I uh, am wearing gloves. I know that works. I've tested it numerous times. But I just, I don't want to mess with the sensitivity and then break it. But I, I, I guess, as I mentioned, I can always just turn it off when I'm not using it. Like, this button is probably going to be, like, glued under here somewhere. I haven't figured that out yet. I need to figure out where that goes. To figure out where the fan goes but anyway this is enough of a test while wearing this i'm going to take this back off i suppose i should enumerate the things that still need to be done so a month or two ago i made a uh, and i made a short about this but a month or two ago i kind of did like a duct tape dummy of my head to try to figure out you know how this all needs to go together and you know it kind of helped a bit i haven't used it yet i only cut it in half and I need to figure out how to like flatten this into latex sheeting cuts and hopefully this is still like shaped roughly close enough. It should be fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to get close to know how to cut. I need to cut the sheeting to figure out how to get it on here and then I will glue it all on here. My plan is to have a zipper down the back of the head to make it easier to put on and take off. I'm probably also going to get a buckle for this elastic strap to be able to just buckle it behind my head instead of having to like pull it out and fit down because the latex on top of it might make that difficult. I probably need to do that sooner rather than later because I'm going to need to permanently attach the straps to these clips uh, before I go in here and glue the latex onto this frame because like you know, I'm going to need to glue all the way down to here and then all the way up. Like this entire thing is going to have to have latex glued to it. And once that's done, I'm not really going to be able to get it here and do this. So I need to get a buckle. I think this is an inch and a half. I need to measure that and then order. But that's the big thing is just get that done. I need to figure out the rest of this wiring situation. It's not a huge deal. It just needs to be done. I need to figure out where to put this button on the the head. Like I'm thinking probably under here along the side here somewhere. Another thing I need to do is I have a fan. I need to figure out how I'm going to attach the fan in here and then how to power it. It's a five volt fan so that's not that difficult 
Realistically, I'm probably just gonna plug it into the five volt outputs on the matrix portal here, which is how I'm powering the LED panels right now. And in the future, maybe I can figure out some way to control that fan so it's not just gonna run constantly. Like if, if I give it five volts, it might run way too fast and loud. So I might need to put a potentiometer on it or even pulse width modulate it somehow. Um, I might I might not even put the fan on originally, like for the first the, the first go at it. So this that's just gonna take up space here. I do have a little bit of room on like this side over here to like maybe get a bra or make a bracket to hold a, the battery pack or something just on this side of the frame. Um, but I don't know. There's just a lot to still do here. And the last thing to show right now is this little test gluing that I did of rubber sheeting to the material that the frame is made out of. Uh, and I also put a couple strips of the copper tape under there and soldered a wire onto that and just that was to make sure that you know this that A the glue would stick to it and B that it would still work and I tested with a glove yada yada it definitely still works everything's fine as expected here and this is actually just um, Gorilla Glue like um, super glue gel. That's the word gel. Um, I tried using just the uh, rubber cement that I would am going to use. Actually, I'll get back to that. I tried using rubber cement to see how that would work, and it just did not bind to the plastic at all. But this super glue, like, look how much I can pull on that, and it's not. It's not yielding. So that's how I'm going to attach rubber to plastic. It's, it's yielding maybe a little bit, but I also like, didn't get a lot of coverage in there. So, so this, this is how I am attaching these things. Like, I can feel the plastic bending more than anything else here. So that's really nice. Um, and I did do another test. I need another prop. So I had done another like little latex working project, God, probably eight months ago by now, just to refresh my memory on how this stuff worked. And uh, I was messing with it a couple of weeks ago and I noticed that some of the, the seams were failing, which is weird because I used the rubber cement that I like always use and it was um, a little concerning that it was already failing. So I'm like, I need to do a, a test of different types of adhesives that I can use for here um, or for um, attaching the rubber to itself. So what I did was I did a strip of rubber of the rubber cement, then I did the Gorilla Glue, and then I did just regular super glue, which is just thin and runny. And it all mostly worked pretty well, but the super glues get brittle basically, and it kind of kind of crunchy, and they don't like getting stretched. You can kind of hear the, the crunchiness going on there. Oh yeah. That's like the, the glue cracking because it's getting stretched. It's not a stretchy glue. And it, it doesn't like being Yeah. It doesn't like being stretched apart. You can see those like lines forming in the, the rubber there. That's just where the glue is and everything else is just like where it isn't. So it really doesn't like being stretched. And the, that was the Gorilla Glue and the regular super glue is basically the same thing if not a little worse. And it also kind of just pulls apart now. Well, the super glue did. The Gorilla Glue is still holding pretty well. But the one that I did with the rubber cement, and maybe when I did the other project, I didn't put enough weight on it or whatever. But this is working perfectly. You can see it's just stretching, stretching, stretching. And if I go in the other direction, it also just stretches. It doesn't complain. Like this, that's, uh, it makes sense. That's what this glue, this rubber cement's, uh, kind of intended to it's like really for patching holes and tires and stuff, but I mean that's the exact same thing as what you're doing here, so and it's 
it'll pull apart if you try to pull it apart. But if you don't try to pull it apart, it should be fine. So I've done my, my tests for adhesives, for rubber to rubber and rubber to plastic. Um, it's, I'm, I'm just to the point where I have to, I have to actually do it. Also at uh, one point, I got zipper stuff and just was like figuring out how to do the zippers. So I have a whole strip of zipper track and some zipper pools and other associ associated zipper stuff. And like you have to like bathe this up effectively in the rubber cement to like make it actually be something you can glue to rubber. But I suppose I should try gluing this, gluing rubber to this and making sure that all works, but everything should be good there. Like, I think I, I have the, the pieces. I just have to put it all together. And that is what I am getting a little bit procrastination-y over. So, um, Welcome to my Windows VM on my file server because I need this to control the ATEM for various settings. But it has a calendar. Uh, so like we're here and we've got one, two, three, four weeks after this week. And then I'm out of town for two weekends. Um, we have three weekends before BLFC. This one's going to be decompressing after my trip. This one's going to be getting ready for BLFC. So I have like a weekend here to like finalize last minute things that need done. But otherwise, one, two, three, four. And I'm probably, I want to take a mini trip on one of these weekends. So it's really, I have three weekends to finish this. Uh, <laughs> this is, this isn't good. So I'm just, I, I, I'm i going to work on it. Uh, tomorrow, I'm probably going to be out all day. So that's not going to work. I'll have, probably have to do a little bit of work on Monday or Tuesday. And then it'll be next weekend and I'll try to do more like next weekend. I want to get the foam done. That's the goal for next weekend is put, finish the foam on the inside of this. Um, and potentially also on, on the brackets here, but like get, get the foam done. That is the current status of this project. That is what's left. That is how much time I have left to get this done before I want to have it at a convention. Oh, it's a set it's setting in just how little time it remains but I'm gonna try to get this done and assuming that I do get this done I'm gonna take it to BLFC and I'm going to wear it at least a couple of times that's all I have for now I'm gonna continue working on this later next early next week probably off camera and next weekend, we'll do some foaming on the inside and hopefully some more than that too. But for now, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this series and you want to watch me get more and more panicked as the deadline approaches and I'm nowhere near done, hit the subscribe button, hit the, hit the like button, leave a comment, you know the drill. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching. Holy fuck, three, four weekends?